Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we got a really fun test. Uh, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the Fort Scott munitions 9mm TUI. Uh, you guys may recall the video. If you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. But we did a video where we compared the TUI against all of our favorite carry loads in 9mm. We tested a ton of great rounds, all side by side, fair comparison. So if you want to see how it compares to a lot of other great carry loads, check that video out. Um, this video is going to focus on the TUI. We're going to try some barrier testing. We're going to shoot through some plywood and some drywall and some other fun redneck experiments in today's video. And we're also going to test the TUI out of a 16-inch barrel uh, to see if that boost in velocity gives us any different uh, you know, action in the gel block. So we've already got a gel test where we shot the 4.6-inch barrel in the CZ uh, SPO1 Phantom, and it performed quite well. We are going to step up to a longer barrel just to see, you know, to compare those two shots and see what we get. So we're going to test that gel shot here in this video, and we're also going to take on some other interesting things. So uh, let's get after it. It's going to be a fun day. Let's do it. All right, we're going to conduct a baseline FBI ballistics gel test with the 16-inch barrel, and uh, hopefully we'll have something to compare against the 4.6-inch barrel in the CZ there. 115-grain Fort Scott, TUI. 16 inch Keltec Sub 2000. We got a, a, a t shirt layer, fleece, flannel, and denim. So that's our FBI spec testing. And we got two 10% uh, clear ballistics gel blocks back there behind it. Let's we'll see what happens. Looks like we got a nice center shot on that. We'll see what happened. All right, so here's our test. Looks pretty interesting there. Well, it obviously shot through all four layers. Went into the first block, began to tumble. Pretty good looking permanent cavity on that. And then it uh, wound up base forward in the second block, giving us a total of 24 inches of penetration out of a uh, 16 inch barrel and nine millimeter. That's great for a 115. And just like we uh, figured it would do, it's supposed to tumble and it wound up base forward in the block. Let's pull that out. And it actually just wound up almost pooped out of the top of the block there, but 24 inches of penetration. Uh, that's a pretty considerable feat there. And it looks like we've got 100% weight retention. You could literally load that projectile again if you wanted. It uh, retained its shape and weight, uh, which is what the projectile was supposed to do. Now, I don't have the data in front of me. I don't know how it compares to the 4.6 inch barrel, but it'll be interesting to see what the penetrating capabilities are between the two barrel lengths. And that's why we wanted to do this particular test in this video, so we'd have something to compare against the 4.6 inch barrel in the CZ uh, SPO1 Phantom. So uh, really cool, interesting baseline test. Let's move on and shoot some other cool stuff. First test is gonna be a, dry, a standard uh, code wall. We've got two sheets of drywall, and we've got insulation in there, and then we've got a couple of watermelons back there to catch uh, whatever comes through. One of the things about hollow points is that if that hollow point uh, gets caught up with a whole bunch of crap in it, it can cause it to not expand as it's supposed to. So we're gonna test the TUI in this uh, type of situation. This would be, I guess, indicative of a home defense situation, something like that. We're testing the penetration, everything. Let's do it. 16 inch barrel, here we go. All right, let's see what happened. I have a feeling that made it through, obviously. All right, guys, so definitely no mystery there. We, we knew that the nine millimeter was gonna push right on through the wall, as well as our, uh, our poor watermelons here. I'm looking into uh, watermelon number two, and I'm definitely seeing some yawing characteristic. Uh, we've got the bullet has gone oblong going into this watermelon, and also not exactly straight line penetration. It started to curve, and it came out of the side of the watermelon right here. Um, so when you have a yawing effect, what essentially happens is when you take a ball round or something similar to a ball round and it begins to go into a ballistic medium and tumble, that yawing effect, when that bullet becomes oblong, it's creating a unique wounding pattern all in its own regard from being oblong. Uh, when you have a musket projectile coming out of like a black powder rifle, it punches a really clean hole through something. And that's because the bullet does not physically deform or destabilize, when you have a round projectile, it's gonna punch a relatively round hole. You don't get that with the TUI. It's gonna make a pretty nasty wound channel. Um, we're gonna get into some other testing. Uh, drywall's an interesting medium, but I've got a few other things in mind, so let's, uh, let's see what it does. 
All right, we're going to conduct a pine baffle penetration test with the Keltec Sub 2000 Fort Scott Munitions TUI copper solid 115 grain bullet. Plywood and pine baffles tend to do some really weird things when you shoot them with projectiles. The old Army standard is a three quarter inch pine baffle. If it can get penetrated at any velocity, it has the potential to cause a, poten a lethal wound. Okay, we know that, but how many baffles can we penetrate at close range? I think what's going to happen now, this is Chad and I were actually having this discussion. I think that the projectile is going to sort of, it's going to yaw like it's supposed to, it's going to tumble, okay? But as the projectile becomes elongated, it's going to have a lot more difficulty penetrating those boards. Let's give it a try. All right, what happened, guys? We'll see. All right, guys, I've been wrong. Color me impressed. Pretty interesting result. Not what I expected out of the uh, pine baffles here, okay? We recovered the projectile. I'm all thumbs today, guys. We recovered the projectile. Looks like 100% weight retention there. Obviously being solid, absolutely no deforming of the projectile, okay? The projectile penetrated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, baffle stacks and started to go through number eight, but it stopped spun around and then landed on the table right here. But if you look at the entry hole, which you can't, probably can't see, but I can, straight line penetration through the boards. Surprising though, I thought that being a, being a tumble upon impact that maybe it would begin to destabilize, it would begin to yaw, and then that elongated projectile pushing through the, uh, the hard baffles would have a difficult time penetrating. What we see is that with the TUI, you get straight line penetration through hard objects, but something of a more fleshy consistency is going to give you the yawing effect. So what makes it interesting is that this projectile is completely barrier blind. If this were to go through a hard surface, just like we did through the drywall earlier, the drywall would be enough to upset the projectile. The projectile didn't really begin to tumble and yaw until after it made it into the first watermelon. So that's a pretty interesting result. Okay, we're gonna try a liquid shot here. We've got some uh, milk here with a couple of sodas in the background. We'll see what we can do to maybe get through here on this stuff. 115 grain TUI from Fort Scott and a nine millimeter Keltec Sub 2000, 16 inch barrel. Here we go. <sighs> That's not this morning's milk, by the way, guys. Ah. I'm quickly realizing why you don't want to mix soda and milk for one. And two, if you're shooting at liquid, you don't want to be 10 feet away because I quickly uh, got covered in yesterday's milk. All right, just uh, mind you, this isn't fresh, cold milk right out of the refrigerator. This has uh, been sitting on overnight milk. Anyhow, it went through three milk jugs into our soda bottle and then it ripped off and went down range. Actually carried through a lot better than I thought. You know, liquid is a crazy thing. It, it stops projectiles pretty readily. Uh, it takes a lot of liquid. Um, well, it doesn't take a lot of liquid to stop a projectile. We've shown that with the 50 cal before. Uh, you know, it takes uh, sometimes less than four of the five gallon uh, pails to stop a 50 BMG. So the fact that it got through like that is pretty surprising. Uh, the last two sodas are unscathed. Overall, an interesting experiment. In all of these water shots, we see the projectile work its way down, which tells me that as it goes through the jugs and it's working down, it means it's tumbling nose forward and it is yawing as it's supposed to yaw there. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We really appreciate all the support. All the folks who support us on Patreon, thank you very much. If you purchase man cans or shirts and merchandise over on the website, all the funds we earn off of that goes right back into supporting the channel. Thank you so much for believing in us. We hope you enjoyed it. We really love doing ammo tests. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.